Hello and welcome to MediaBistro.com's Media Beat. I'm Kevin Alaka, the editor of TV Newser, and we're joined today by Simon Marks, the incoming president of McNeil Lair Productions. So, incoming president and CEO. Of that McNeil is correct. Productions. Um, and before we get started talking about the news hour and some of the work you're doing over there, I kind of want to get your thoughts on some of the international reporting issues that are happening. And uh, you have a very extensive international reporting background. And I, I want to quote this from the release because it. it you know, got my attention. Um, I hope it's true. You're covering, you covered breaking and developing news stories in Russia, France, Germany, the UK, India, Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Venezuela, Mexico, Brazil, and others. That's over a long period of time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a lot of countries. Not all yeah. Last year. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the scaling back mm -hmm. of international coverage and, um, you know, where that's heading. And are there any international stories that you think are severely being underreported oh, right I now? Mean, the, most of them yeah. are being severely underreported. I mean, Kevin, 20 years ago, uh, I was based in Moscow. And you'd go to the airport in Moscow and you'd get on the plane and you'd be flying to Azerbaijan or Dushanbe or Tbilisi. And we'd be in one part of the plane and CBS would be over here and ABC would be back there and NBC would be over there and we'd all be chatting on the plane and we'd be seeing each other in the hotels and we'd be competing on that story. No one's going to those places anymore. If you are lucky enough to be based in a place like Moscow, you probably can't even really sell to your desk a story at this point from a large, important country like Ukraine, uh, much less uh, a, from the perspective of the desks, a slightly more obscure country like Georgia or Azerbaijan or Uzbekistan. I mean, that's just one example of a part of the world that is completely undercovered at this point by those of us in the television news industry. Yeah. I think Russia is an interesting. A lot of people who have covered Russia like like to talk about their time there, uh, you know, and write books about it. Yeah, Most of them. I'm like the only true. one that never wrote a book about. What do you think? I mean, how is that? How has covering that country changed um, in the last you know couple of decades? Well, I mean, compared, of course, to 1991, yeah. 1990, when I was uh, sort of arriving on the scene there. I mean, it's much easier in one sense in that you don't have to worry about the uh, constant threat of. Uh, surveillance, of censorship, of being stuck in a, a radius. I mean, when I first got there, you couldn't leave the ring road around Moscow mm -hmm. uh, without first seeking permission from the foreign ministry. So you don't have to do that now. But there are all sorts of other complications. The new Russian government is not particularly fond of uh, journalists to begin with and international journalists with influential audiences particularly. So there are various other pressures that get brought to bear. Much mm -hmm. easier for us as foreign correspondents going in and out though than for the domestic Russian journalists. They're the ones in the, in the front lines of this. And there are some very brave people exercising great courage there, living there on a daily basis without the benefit of a British or an American passport and without the benefit of being able to fly out. Yeah. Um, get, getting back to sort of the general international reporting, uh, the, and, the, and the problems that are that we're starting to crop up, especially financially. I mean, there's a lot, been a lot of cutbacks. Is there a solution, do you think, to, to this problem? Well, there's an obvious solution. I mean, technology mm -hmm. is, is clearly the solution. One of the most alarming things to me about the state of our industry, and one of the most exciting things, frankly, about being able to work at a place like PBS and the NewsHour, uh, is that just at the point at which it became possible to travel vast distances much more cost effectively than ever before. You no longer have to take 15 flight cases of equipment. I remember in the old days, British Airways used to have a separate check-in desk at Heathrow Airport just for TV crews, because they could see these vast amounts of excess baggage passing through the airport, just at the point when an Apple Mac contains more editing power than three steel boxes of equipment used to. Um, just at the point at which you don't have to satellite your material, you can FTP your material back. You have networks saying, oh, we're not so interested in international stories anymore. We're going to focus on Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton and Mel Gibson. That's baffling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, some of those countries that we talked about earlier that you've traveled to, uh, you know, is there, are there any challenges specifically as an American to covering those places? Well, as a Brit. Well, or, or no, I'm sorry, as a, as, as as a, a Brit associated you know, with yeah, yeah. an American uh, outlet. Me. Of course. I mean, ongoing challenges, yeah. ongoing challenges wherever you go. I mean, uh, uh, I was in, in Syria a few years ago. Um, you, uh, when you arrive in Damascus to report, you have to check in at the Ministry of Information. Mm -hmm. A minder is attached to you and is supposed to 
stay with you throughout the, the time that you're there. Some of the minders are slightly less heavy-handed than others. Some of them get bored and disappear. But that, that constrains your ability to act and your freedom of movement. I, I can't say that I've in many places felt particularly threatened mm. by the fact that I'm representing uh, American outlets. But there are other parts of the world where we have sent people, like Iran, mm -hmm. where it, there are real issues and problems in terms of getting permission just to be there in the first place. And then once you're there, actually being able to stay and complete the assignment. Yeah. Well, um, that's it for part one of our interview. Um, stick around for part two. We're going to talk a little bit more about the digital transition with Simon Marks, the incoming CEO and president of McMillan.